uh, Osmo Config Merge second take. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is going to be really quick. Uh, it's a really small tool, but I think it's rather useful and I think uh, some wider audience is deserved. But just to make sure, who does not, or who, who does know what Osmo Config Merge is and what it does? Yeah, okay, so there's exactly two people. Well, a third one. And I know Niels also knows it, but he's not here. But uh, okay, so it's worth to very quickly look at it. So what's the problem that it tries to solve? Um, well, we have, um, uh, particularly in our testing, we have tons of config files uh, that are used all around, and of course, every you know every test needs some changes in a config file. Um, and uh, particularly in the DC and three case, we we end up having copies of the, like we copy the default config file from the uh, doc examples directory of a given Osmocom program, and then we change uh, some bits here and there, and particularly during development, maybe we change um, the, the config file syntax, or we add some new commands. I'm not really saying breaking in the sense that we break compatibility, but breaking in the sense that there are additional lines or lines change order or things like that in the examples. Um, so manually updating all those copies is not nice, and um, in most cases, a test really only wants to modify very few settings. Um, now, in Osmo GSM Tester, we use a template mechanism for that because we need to change really so many things about the configs, which is fine. This is not what this is trying to solve, but it's in other situations. And um, well, of course, the obvious is so why why don't we use a diff? Um, well, because uh, diffs have context. And uh, the context is what is volatile in this particular problem, and it means that uh, diffs end up not applying anymore because of this, um, uh, well, some changes in the context before or after the, the hunk in the patch. And uh, the, so basically, it doesn't work because uh, diff assumes a, well, a textual structure of some sort, and uh, VTY has a different structure, uh, which is organized on the node hierarchy. And um, the idea of Osmo Config Merge is basically to have some special patch format uh, for uh, config files in the Osmocom style, which exploits this hierarchical structure. Um, uh, by simply adding lines to the nodes of the tree. So, uh, and if you think of the BSC, everybody knows there is like the network node, and then there's the BTS node, and there's a TRX node underneath, and the time slot node. So, you basically need to specify the path of that uh, uh, node in the tree, and then you can add some lines at the end of that node. And the syntax is rather simple. You say Osmo config merge, the original config file, then any number of additional arguments that each specify those patches, and there's a dash dash debug which will give you some output on what it does. So, how does a patch look like? That's uh, the simple uh, a simple patch example. So you basically say network bt zero trx zero max power red twelve, and that's your patch file that gets added to the original config file. And uh, you hear some echo at times. Um, so. The uh, uh, result of this example then looks like diff if you do a diff, right? So assuming that foo.diff is basically that uh, a f a file that I uh, present here on this slide, then on the next slide, this is the result you get. Basically, it, go it iterates into that node and it adds that line at the bottom. Keep in mind that it adds it to the bottom, which is a nice way of not having to find if there are any other max power reduction commands further up in the VTY file and having to replace that or modify that, which would be more complex. It just adds it to the bottom because the file is parsed from top to bottom, and if there is another power reduction earlier on, it will just be overwritten by the maximum power reduction at the end of the line. And if you do that three times, the last one will always prevail in the end. So um, it uh, also exploits that particular way of how the VTY config files are parsed. Yeah, I could do a demo. Not sure if it's really necessary. Uh, does anyone want to see a demo? <laughs> no. Uh, Daniel wants to see a demo. Well, you will not see it over there, Daniel. Um, <laughs> you have to come here. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious what it does. Um, it's really uh, straightforward, and um, as I said, I think it can be useful. Oh, sorry. Yep. So I see you're actually not replacing the line, but just adding it at the end. Yes. So that means if there's some kind of configuration which actually has some kind of state, which means if you run it twice, then uh, it may not be the desired effect. You know what I mean? And I cannot think of any option like that, but I'm probably, I'm quite sure we probably have some. 
So um, you cannot create new entire nodes that way. Um, but that wouldn't. Um, yeah, so that would, well, yes, you can actually. Um, yeah, but I'm thinking like some option which adds some, uh, a new item into a list, for instance. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't work for, for, for that, that's clear. Um, the point about uh, not replacing the original string line is that you need more context information. Of course, if you just have the text knowledge, this program doesn't know what kind of uh, options are registered with the parser. So it doesn't know what is a fixed part of the command and what's an additional argument. So it doesn't have any context but the text. So you cannot reliably replace uh, any line um, in, uh, in, in the text because you don't really know whether they might be identical or whether that's a different command. So let's say you have an, uh, a line in the, in the file that only has uh, one command and an additional argument. Um, and then you have a new line that has two arguments, then you don't really know if the, that one is supposed to replace the, the first one or if it's really a different line. Um, so mm -hmm. you need more knowledge about the... Well, in that case, I, 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 I think we could have some uh, parameters on flag to the uh, program which actually makes it replace or add it depending on what you look for. Yeah, well, uh, patches are always welcome, Paul. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, the use case didn't, I mean, if, if there's a use case, yes, I mean, the existing use case that wasn't really needed and I just thought uh, this is a very quick hack to solve this and, yeah. So, related is, is that um, there have been a few times that the config file reading and writing process is broken in that if you load a... Um, load a valid config and write it out and then try to reload it, the program won't start because it doesn't like what it's written. Yes. So we should also test that, but it could also be a way of, if you, if you load this modified config in to the program and write it, it would um, replace these double lines with the, yes. in, the, in the correct, in quotes, place, right? So is there a way to actually do that without starting the program as such? Um, no. Like... You know, so, so Osmo VSC, for example, wouldn't start if it can't bind to its VTY port, so you wouldn't actually be able to. But how, how, would, would that be an idea, to have a, some kind of a routine using the same code that's in the daemon to just say, read and rewrite this config file and then see if you can reread it? <laughs> Not reliably. Um. I mean, in theory, you can do it, but then there are things that, for example, create. So if you say, well, control, if you have a line that says control interface at that port, that line will actually make the control interface bind to that port. And if that's not available at the time, then it fails. Or if you as the, configure an SS7 uh, link or something, then uh, an AS or whatever, it will actually, again, bind that port and want to allocate that resource. And um, you, uh, you can't really separate that. Mm. I mean, okay, so an invalid command or something, a typo in your diff would also stop the program from starting. Right? Of course, yeah. yeah. But the, the, the general problem of not writing, uh, not being able to read what it writes, um, I think it should be possible to uh, script or automatize the task to some extent. Um, so basically, you would need some code that understands the, uh, the, the, the way how we describe the possible arguments, the VTY syntax, basically. And then you can uh, generate all kinds of uh, files uh, within that uh, syntax and then try to um, uh, yeah, read it and then write it. No, the problem was you write it out and then you read it back, yeah. Or actually, even interactively, it could be a... Um, uh, you could start it up and then there could be a, a script that over the VTY, like over the, the Telnet interface, actually changes things and writes it and then uh, you, you try to restart it or something like that. So I, I think, I mean, it's, it's certainly not ideal, but I think uh, if somebody wanted to improve the situation, that would be, uh, to some extent, it would be possible. Um, I mean, the proper solution is, of course, to have a proper MIP, but that's another... Uh, for another time, I mean, to, to really, uh, that's the, the whatever VTY 2.0 discussion that we had some time ago, but it's not, 
not likely to happen anytime soon. What about restarting the program from within it, from within itself? Is that difficult to do? Restarting it from, from like just within. say sort of go back to startup time from within. So you would you would open start the program, open V2Y, write and restart. Well, of course you can exec yourself. Yeah. I mean, if that's yeah. what you want, but then of course you lose all the state. No? That's clear. Mm. Uh, that means you, you know, all the the file descriptors uh, you would close, uh, so all the telnet, whatever, all the connections are gone. Yeah. I mean, that's the same as having systemd restarted uh, when you kill it, basically. It's yeah. just without the systemd involvement or initd yeah. or whatever. I mean, you know, so essentially, like typing typing into the configuration terminal is the same as reading the configuration file. So it would be possible to just also tell the program to reread the configuration file at some point. Yeah, yeah. that. Uh, uh, is I think is more realistic, though you then have the same problem about, about all the resources that already exist. So mm -hmm. while you while you update them, then um, I mean I I think it's possible to do. I mean the the result will probably not reflect what most people expect at that point, because uh, as you know, some things take immediate effect, some others don't, and um, that sort of uh, that problem still persists. But ignoring that, I think it should be possible to to do it because, as you say, it's more or less the same thing that as as if you enter it on the VTY. So why not reread the file? It will look up all the elements based on the nodes, and it will change all the settings. Um, as I said, it's just those things that won't become active uh, while interactively issuing VTY commands also won't become active at that point. Um, yeah, but that can but, be yeah. that, that can be like a, uh, something left up to the operator. But it is it is something I sort of deal with in terms of mm -hmm. I want to make a change, but I don't want to restart. Yeah. Um, but I know that this change is possible without um, without restarting. So then I can change it in the configuration terminal, and maybe it requires resend system information, and maybe it requires a restart of the BTS. But mm -hmm. um, it, then I also have to go and edit the configuration file. Otherwise, I would lose that on the next restart when I don't want to write because I never, um, I don't, I don't trust that anymore. Really, <laughs> having been bitten a couple of times by the non non rereading of the written config. Um, of course, I mean I can just verify that, I suppose, on each version and then feel okay with it and then just write. Use right, but <laughs> maybe we should uh, put some Git integration there that you have a um, a pre write hook and a post write hook. <laughs> where mm. You can actually so you can put the results under revision control. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then at least you you know what has changed after the write, so you can look at the diff nicely. Mm. Maybe that's uh, it could be as easy as having a whatever shell command uh, that is issued uh, before and after the the write of the file. But well, we do make a make a backup copy one write. Correct? Yes, but it's only one and yeah. it's not really a, a history. Mm -hmm. okay. okay.